Hello, Guardians, and welcome to Destiny Reset, episode 143. This podcast is about anything and everything related to the Destiny franchise. If you love playing Destiny 2 as much as we do, you're in the right place. This reset, we welcome special guest Dan Finity as we prepare for Warmind with a plethora of new info on Season 3, put on our tinfoil hats with a possible new ARG teased by Chris Barrett, and finally talk about raid design in Destiny 2. Hello, Guardians, and welcome. It's Arrow Knights, and of course, Cyborg Sasquatch. Hello, friend. Hello. How are you? Good evening. How are you? I'm good. Gotta I'm answer it. <laughs> kind of tweaked out because I watched Westworld a little while ago. Oh, yeah. The show is I'm crazy. way behind on that <laughs> hype. Way behind. If you hear a giggle, it's our friend, Baby Arugula. There's a guest. I mean, Damfinity. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Baby Arugula. Welcome. <laughs> this has got to be the quickest introduction to a guest I'm ever. I'm sorry, on our Mike. Show. I, I laugh too much. <laughs> no, hey, it's okay. That's great. Good. Can't miss you. Uh, welcome to the show, special guest Dan Finity. He's a pretty fun guy, so we're happy to have him on the show. Dan, you, how are you? I'm doing well, man. I can't complain. I just uh, today I I spent about like uh, nine hours streaming. That's so, a good stream. Yeah. I'm in... Well, it was like two separate streams. I'm like... I'm kind of in this weird... Did you fit lunch in there? I did. I did fit nice. lunch in there. Very nice. Uh, and it consisted of the pan cold pancakes from the morning <laughs> <laughs> that, that Jenny had made. Because she was like, do you want breakfast? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll get it in a little bit. Just like all bleary-eyed. And <laughs> right. Like, then it was like three hours later. I was like, oh, man... Kratos is going through a lot right now, and boy, yeah. boy, it's so good. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm kind of all I'm I'm in all sorts of different head spaces right now. So <laughs> all right, well we're gonna Welcome. get you into the Destiny headspace for this Podcasting. hour. <laughs> Stoked. Uh, before we do that, do we want to do a couple announcements? Um, yeah, I think so. We should have a couple, right? <laughs> we got One a clan reminder this week. I think. Yeah, clans. Yes. What they're, about clans? They're a thing. Work? <laughs> in Destiny 2 that awards you in grams, but also they're there for social interaction in case you forgot. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have restructured the clans since Curse of Osiris. Um, we did go through and clean some house from inactivity. We know some people are planning to return for Warmind. We're happy that that's going to go down. But if you come back and find that you are no longer in the clan that you were once a member of, that also could be a symptom of the fact that we consolidated some of the clans. Uh, so what you want to do, go join our Discord, discord.gg slash destiny reset. Go to clan signups channel and just... Put it out there what you're what you're looking to do, you know, what platform you play on. If you're in the in a clan, let us know where you were. We'll try to get you back in a good place. Uh, if you're not in a clan now and you are looking for uh, cool and fun, happy people to play Destiny with, you're welcome to join us. Just come Look by the no Discord, further. come introduce yourself, uh, make some relationships, and we'll find a great place for you. Plenty of room. Absolutely. Always there. If you just want some clan rewards. There's plenty of clans out there for you. Not ours. <laughs> we want you to build friendships. Long lasting <laughs> friendships in the game. The rewards. The end game is the friend game. Exactly. That Bungie sounds Jr. That, that sounds sound like familiar? me like a week ago. I've been keeping track of all the clan activity for for my clan current meta. And like I'm seeing people that haven't been on for like a hundred days. So sure, I, yeah. I was like, all right, well, well, the, then I guess I know what that means. That means I need to open up a few spots <laughs> and like, yeah, you I know, posted that on Twitter with a gif of the Joker breaking a pool stick and then just throwing one down. And that got a reaction out of some people. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one and I laughed because I knew exactly what was going on there. <laughs> uh, 
Well, yes, <laughs> we do want you to create friendships, long-lasting friendships in the Derp fam. So plenty of room. Don't hesitate to uh, jump in and join up. We also wanted to throw out there, um, Cyborg and I uh, are doing some blue giveaways over the next couple of weeks. You should yes. see them. So uh, keep an eye out for that. So our good There's old one up on blue. Air Knight's Twitter right now. Yes, and Cyborg, I believe you may have something here. Mine will be up long. by the time the show goes live. Go look yes. for a giveaway pinned to our Twitter profiles. We each have a different one. Yes. Uh, for Blue Gear, uh, we're using Gleam. We've used that before. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It's a good tool. It's a good to way to give track submissions. Mm-hmm. And, and get engagement. So yes. uh, that's two chances to win piece of blue gear yes and we also have to throw out at the top of the show like we tend to do when some new content's coming out soon spoiler warning for <laughs> war mind information uh yeah. it's very possible we're going to talk about some things that you may not want to know until you get your hands on the content yourself um but uh you'll hear it in the news right before we start talking about it you don't have to skip the whole show but, yeah, uh, but as typical, we're up. only talking about stuff that is public knowledge. Yes. So, you know, if you're just following what Bungie releases or has shown on streams and things of the like, then you'll be safe. We, we don't have any inside scoop. Arrow has divulged all of his information <laughs> that he has on this expansion. So you're not, gonna, you're not going to hear anything that you haven't seen from Bungie. Yes. So Warmind... Is a thing, and we're going to talk about it. Can't stop us. <laughs> now, how about we return to our lovely guest? Please. Oh, lovely. Flattery will get you everywhere. What's going on? So, Dan, Dan. did Dan tell us enough about himself, or do we want to know more? We want to <laughs> no. know more. Would you like to know more? We want to know more. Starship All right. Troopers. All right. Well, uh, where do I start? Okay. I was born uh, in Indiana. <laughs> uh and I'll probably die here. That's fine by me. Uh, I, <laughs> I, you know where home is. Exactly, man. Exactly. Uh, I am a, uh, man, a recovering musician. And uh, yeah, I play. I played Destiny and and have played games pretty much since. Uh, when the N64 came out, I got a Super NES for that Christmas. And There's his age. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> While I was incredibly disappointed at the time, uh, <laughs> talking, like, looking back on it, my parents kind of knew what was up without knowing what was up. Because <laughs> they were just like, this one's cheaper. This one already has a yeah. bunch of games. The kids will love it. And we did. We Loved it so much. So still a great system. It's so good, man. It just wasn't what all your friends were getting and playing, right? Exactly. Know? Like they were playing Golden Golden Eye while I was playing Super Mario <laughs> RPG and Turtles in Time, <laughs> and me and my brother and my nephews would just constantly fight over it. So it was. It, I don't know. It. I have a lot of like early fond memories of that console, and and gaming in general. So it's it's. It's something that's always kind of been there, but not really in the forefront for a number of years until recently. And yeah, it's it's good to get back in. Absolutely. So was that your first system, the SNES? Uh, no. My brother-in-law gave us an old 2600, Atari 2600. Oh, nice. and Now we know his real age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said my brother-in-law. Uh, he, he, what, like, I can't remember. Like, man, we were probably like, we were probably in. I I have no idea, man. Like, third, second, school. yeah, yeah, second, yeah. third grade when we got that, and we played battle like battle tanks, which was um, it was this game yeah. you were just given a map. It looked like Pac Man, yeah, and mm-hmm. you had two tanks. There was one that was red and one that was blue, and they went through the map and they could paint like they could shoot bullets, but the bullets would bounce three times. So it was like a weird yeah. thing. To, like it was, it was really fun, but that's like the only one that I remember. Dude, that just reminded me of an 
I can't think of the name or the system right now, but an old school tank game that was like top down multiplayer, like local multiplayer, of course. Uh-huh. I'm I'm gonna have to look it up after. <laughs> I don't know why you just. There was a me bunch of, of tank games were like oh, they were big, so man. Fun. Yeah. There was a lot of them. I remember ones for NES. Mm-hmm. Desert Storm, um, dude. That's yeah. Like oh yeah. Like that's yep, yep. That's where your tank games are coming from. Yeah. Now we just have World of Tanks. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Where has the tank uh, genre play. gone? <laughs> what went wrong? Didn't Where's didn't it love? become mech suits? You might be right. Yeah. <laughs> Gundam happened. Yeah. Japan happened. That's what yes! happened. <laughs> Like you got now Titanfall. we've got the well. Got one Titanfall. thing figured out this episode. <laughs> uh, so so that's where you got your start in gaming. Mm-hmm. What brought you to Destiny? Uh, honestly, so I was, I I was playing like uh, Bioshock and Fez on like a friend's console and. Like, I didn't even have my own console when I started playing Destiny. I was, or my own PlayStation account. Um, I was, I was playing on a roommate's PlayStation. Destiny came out, uh, and the library that I worked at had a copy on the shelf. Like, uh, special note. Nice. If you, uh, if you are looking for, um, video games on the cheap, check your local library. It's pretty. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, people don't realize that libraries like loan out media and stuff nowadays. Yeah, they became Blockbuster after Blockbuster went out. Um, <laughs> so, like that came that that came to my attention because of the legacy of Bungie. I never played any of the Halo games, um, but I remember like friends would talk about it in high school all the time, and mm-hmm. so like just the legacy of Bungie. And, like, seeing some of the commercials, because, like, I remember seeing some badass commercials for it. Like, right Yeah, all the live-action stuff they did yeah. before worked. release was, like, incredible. Yeah. So, I jumped in probably, like, two, three weeks after launch. Um, and just was hooked immediately. It was, like, the first game where I could play online with anybody. I had a friend named Paul who was, like, my video game friend. And, mm-hmm. like, we, we would run through some stuff here and there. Um, I didn't have a microphone, so he would literally, <laughs> he'd talk in into the mic. It would come out of the TV screen, and I would nod my character's head. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, after doing that for a while, I tried Vault of Glass, got kicked out of the Vault of Glass run that I tried to do. Oh, no. Uh, and then I... <sighs> didn't have Galhorn. Yeah, exactly. Right. Or, or a mic and like all these seven year olds are just like, what? (laughs) So, um, not talking, get him out. Exactly. So I don't know. I like somehow I fell into, I was in a dad's destiny clan for a while, uh, for like a a year and a half and like met some really good people through that. Finally purchased my own console, got a PlayStation four. I was playing a PlayStation three. And like ever since then, it's just been like, Destiny has been like the main game on my console. The, when PlayStation came out with the file folder system, like maybe a year ago, there's Destiny, there's a Destiny file, and then there's an everything else file. So that's been my main go to. And the community that like I found not only through like Dads of Destiny, but also like look like through Twitter, through streaming and all this other stuff, that really is what's kept me here i think and so i don't know it's it's just been it's been something that i didn't know i was looking for at the time but made my way into it and and i'm eternally grateful now i I can relate to that heck yeah about i was about the same destiny kind of coincided with changes in my life where like there was a definite need for uh, like a new type of social interaction. Yeah. So I had like young kids and get out as much. It worked a lot. Like Destiny just hit a great spot for me when it started because, um, you know, I was able to like play with my friends and then I made a lot of friends mm-hmm. and then found the community. And yeah, that's what kept kept me there for a while as, as well too. 
Heck yeah, man. And like it, the fact that it, it only seems to be building and it's like the, the elements that have kind of been like kind of trashed on the game. They, they seem to be like kind of moving on. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and so the community that's still here is kind of tightening up a little bit more like this more. So this morning I played with three people that I never would have thought in a million years I'd get to play with like three years ago. And that's like Mark square who I've become like pretty really quick and close friends with over the past six months. Um, gray ghost from guardian one and Paris from gamer tag radio. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Never in a million years. But then, like, I got to play with them this morning, and we all were, like, making fart jokes. So, that was fun. There you go. But I... Destiny brought you together. Exactly, man. And yep. I don't know. It's it's just really... It's a really weird opportunity. And I'm sorry that I name drop so many names. Oh, no, okay. no. That's fine. <laughs> yes. You've got friends. Yeah, man. Yes. In low places, exactly. as they say. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well... Why don't you tell our listeners and us then with uh, Destiny, your love for Destiny and uh, that now and anything before. What got you into streaming, man? Like, uh, what was the what was the motivator there, or the, oh, the fun man. factor for you? So, yeah, that all goes back to Destiny 2 because, like, I was not Destiny, like, n- the numeral 2, <laughs> but Destiny yeah, as, as well. well. And so, um, I... <laughs> I, when I when I first started playing, like it just seemed like there was stuff everywhere, and so I'd always be on YouTube, or like I caught on to this thing called Twitch. Uh, after like I listened to a lot of podcasts as well, and um, like uh, Guardian Radio was one that I would listen to quite a bit, and they mentioned this thing called Twitch, and I was like, oh well, that's interesting. I can watch people play video games, and would jump on there and I'd watch like Professor Broman, uh, goth, um, and like really kind of hung out in their channels for a while. And it wasn't until, till like I got a PlayStation four and saw that I had the capability that I even attempted it. And I hit the button before, like before I became the upstanding citizen you are listening to right now. Um, I hit the button like, man like three or four times and just had no idea what i was doing i was just like nobody's watching me this is dumb why am i doing nobody knows what they're doing the first time (laughs) exactly but like (laughs) i don't know why in my head i was just like this is i can't no this isn't me but like after uh after doing it for a while and like kind of learning the ropes of the do's and the do nots like I it's in your groove. Yeah, man. It's it's been like a really fun adventure. And and it's been it's been something that's been incredibly rewarding because we've been able like on my channel the community that I that we've built there and it's not just me, it's like everybody that's a part of it. It is really positive and really excited about Destiny for the most part. And we just we can relate man yeah yeah we yeah. just we just kind of like community yeah yeah you just you just lock shields <laughs> and yep. and you yep. and you wither the storm like that's it's that's exactly what it is and it's been it's been incredibly fun to meet people and um s- like see what i can do to help in the long run um but yeah it's it's just been awesome very cool yeah so tell us about this other thing you do called Side Quest Sunday. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's one of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> it, like it is That's good. It is in the top five things that I've ever done. And it is a podcast about content creators. Uh not specifically destiny content creators, but those are the only content creators that I really know. So I figure start with what you know and then move on from there um it's just an interview show Mm, i usually have like one guest occasionally i've had like moonvald uh from planet destiny she's been like a guest co-host on a a few episodes um 
and we just talk to content creators. It doesn't necessarily have to be about destiny, but it it always nice. is about like who they are out like I, I try to get like who they were before they started doing whatever they did. Like so if it's streaming, like I I want to talk to them about like what what they did when they were kids, high school, college, the whole I just try to paint a whole picture of the her- person before they finally took the plunge into it and why they took the plunge in. And so it's been it's been really interesting. I booked a ton throughout April, so I have episodes for weeks. Um which is awesome. Yeah, it's 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 really fun. But uh It's a cool perspective, yeah. Yeah, I've Very neat. I've learned that I need to slow down. <laughs> 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 Because I'm just like, oh man, I have like eight episodes I have to edit now. <laughs> like between oh, man. now, yeah. So it's I don't know. It's it's really cool, and um, I feel like the people that I I knew beforehand, we've just become closer friends, and the people that I didn't know beforehand, we've just become closer friends. It's been the same thing. Yeah. And I don't know. It's it's just really exciting and really fun to to meet people, find out why they're doing things, and uh, and try to help promote what they're doing as well very cool that's well, that's uh, great man so does yeah. it does it come out on sundays <laughs> it comes out every <laughs> sunday at midnight if i if i can if i can get it out by midnight there have been some days where it's been like three o'clock in the morning i'm like uh is it gonna come out now and uh usually i'll power through with some coffee or whatever but um yeah, yeah. it comes out that editing man that editing, dude. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it comes out every Sunday. I try to have it around midnight so that it's waiting for you bright and early in the morning on your way to work or like like church or wherever you're off to. I try to make sure that it's there for you um, and that like you get to learn about somebody that you might not have heard of, heard of or someone that you have heard of and just want to know more about. So. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's either you're one of your favorite creators, possibly, and you get to get that unique perspective mm-hmm. leading up to their current status, or it's someone you never heard of, and maybe you'll be a fan fan of afterwards. Exactly. Uh, like this, very cool. This past week, oh man. So <laughs> this week's episode is Jake Myler, Lay's Summerstone, aka oh, the Watermelon yeah. XO. And so, yeah, we just talked about comics, why he got in, like, how he got into it in the first place. And, and like, it's it's such a, it's so interesting hearing somebody, like, from our community talk about, about that. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, I grew up on comics, basically. My mom would go to the grocery store and, like, she'd take us with her once a month. And that usually coincided when the new Thor or Fantastic Four came out, right? So I would mm-hmm. pick those two titles up with whatever like chore money I had. And that was what I do to the point where at one point in my like trajectory, I was trying to get I, I was I went to like Heron School of Art in Indianapolis trying to get into like graphic design and illustration because that's what I wanted to do initially. Um but I don't. I don't know. It's. It, I. It's so fun to talk to people about what they do. <laughs> Be- yeah. Like. Yeah, and and what they did before, and yeah, what motivated them to start whatever they started, and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah, that's. I. I could see where that would be. Uh, very interesting, for everyone listening, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What um, are some? Uh, you mentioned Jake. What are some other? Uh, upcoming episodes, some guests that our listeners can look forward to if they tune in. Oh man! So uh, I talked to the the next uh, the next two coming up are I am T Bot, uh, who is a, a streamer on Mixer, and uh, Man at Arms, who makes uh, YouTube videos, YouTube re- funny YouTube reviews of um, of different weapons in the ga- in game. Uh, some more guests that like some more guests that I've interviewed, but the episodes haven't come out yet are like evil aura, um, who, who is a streamer and he, he works with a, uh, he, he started a charity called gaming for pits that help that, uh, benefits the Villa Lobos 
uh, uh, Pitbull rescue, um, Angry Iceberg, who just got um, partnered on Mixer today, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, Guardian Outpost. Uh, I I this past week I interviewed Doctor Lupo, which that was nuts. Um, Very nice. And then uh, yeah, up, upcoming like uh, I just booked this week Lulu Soccer, uh, or I Lulu is her name now. She's a Twitch streamer, partnered Twitch streamer, and uh, yeah. and uh, Swain from Crucible Radio. So cool, man. nice, yeah, yeah. man, yeah, it's very a, familiar. Nice lineup, you're a busy guy. Yeah, man, it's it's been awesome. It's also it's also been like, oh man, I bit off a lot, and like, it, let's let's go. These chompers are are good as far as I know. <laughs> so. Well, uh, okay. Speaking of content creators, then obviously you are one yourself. Mm -hmm. um, what what's going on with uh, Planet Destiny and uh, the things? Oh, uh, so Planet Destiny, it went away for like a couple of weeks <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, and is under new management, Moonvald, who I mentioned earlier. Um, she has the keys to the kingdom and um, I'm, I, I, w I was lucky enough to be asked to, uh, to be a part of it uh, as a streamer. So that's, I'm going to start streaming on Thursdays from 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um Nice. On on Planet Destiny, so that's that's something that I never thought I'd be able to do either. So, uh, very nice. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just crazy, man. <laughs> that's cool, though. Well, awesome. So you will be on the Planet Destiny Twitch channel for yes. that time slot. Yes, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'm thinking mostly like nightfalls and just like general yeah. shenanigans. Um, yeah. I'm just whatever there is to get into in destiny, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, do you have a favorite class in destiny? People around our community have a real need to segregate people with their subclasses. Okay. There's an ongoing class war. If you're not aware, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am very aware to the point where, um, so I am an exo hunter main on both PlayStation four and Xbox. Oh. Um, you just made some listeners happy. Yeah, we don't have hunters on too often, man. Yeah, man. I I, I try to do my best. I've been loving that Arc Strider lately. That's been nice. awesome. I, I hear it's pretty uh, pretty tasty now. I've even been using it in raids, which kind of kind of scares me. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah. So so that's my main subclass. However, there are some malicious rumors out there that I am a Titan main, and I just want to put those to bed. Uh, but uh. I It'd also be okay. I mean it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> but you don't have you don't have like the capes. <laughs> yeah, right. I know no. the capes are cool. The Warlock class though, right? Those robes. I mean pff, Yeah, I mean I th that and they're come on. They're Easy. They're stupid Easy. <laughs> Easy boys. I did love my warlock back in the House of Wolf Trials days. Oh, I mean, I can't forget that. <laughs> I'll take yeah. I'll take warlock robes over <laughs> Uh, hunter slippers all day. So. <laughs> Here we go. Oh man. Here we go. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> but yeah, I also I also really like a. I'm I'm a huge fan of hard light, dude. That gun has made. Well, you got to be excited about what's oh, coming sure. then. Huh? Yeah, it's made yeah. it's made its way into my heart pretty pretty heavy. And then seeing the up the upcoming changes, I'm just like, oh man, what's that gonna do in the suck room in Leviathan? Like, yeah, uh, what is that damage going to look like? Because everybody's using cold heart or everybody in my groups generally are like, yeah. should I use cold heart? And I'm like, no, use the hard light. It's super awesome. It's the best. <laughs> and nobody believes me until I play with it. Um, so it's I don't know. I'm well, that really double that double damage with the uh, projectiles. Oh, you don't I'm really interested to see. Dude. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I'm what so people excited. are going to do with that. I'm like everybody, equip hard, hard light, and we're gonna we're gonna bounce our rounds off of this <laughs> tiny uh, architectural shape onto Callus, yeah. and melt them, right? Well, what was <laughs> somebody somebody was mentioning about the damage fall off in like Crucible, like trying to get um like maybe <laughs> trying to get Fallout to maybe test whether if you bounced it off of a Titan's bubble, would that mm. count as the bounce? For double damage, huh. interesting. Like, 
that was just somebody in my chat earlier today, and I was like, I have no idea, but get him on that stat. Yeah. You need that <laughs> information. Oh, there's going to be a lot of people playing with that toy to see what they can pull off <laughs> in a couple well, of I weeks guess here. you uh, indirectly answered uh, the favorite weapon question. So, Oh, sorry. I mean, <laughs> I'm no, it up. works. I mean, we've got to move on to an right even on more track. serious question here, okay. my friend. All right. Um, all right. I mean, you see it in the show notes. I'm sure you yes. prepped mentally um, for this. I didn't have to prepare Pineapple. Pineapple. Does it belong on pizza? Does anything truly belong on pizza? That is my argument <laughs> that I'm going yes. to make. However, pineapple on pizza is delicious. I love uh. pineapple on pizza. It's awesome. You know what makes it even better? Mm. Barbecue sauce. Oh man, barbecue sauce, pineapple. I can do barbecue chicken pizza. No man, not. Uh, you take man, that. Thanks for coming on, man. It was great to uh, <laughs> talk with you this week. Yeah, dude. Uh, Just uh, let me know when this comes out, and uh, I'll send you my yeah. links and stuff. So, <laughs> absolutely. We'll, we'll try to play it off as like the first half was with you, and the second half was then back. No, with I us. mean we're gonna we're gonna be honest with our listeners. Yeah, I agree. Look, he, he's got to go. <laughs> I, look. <laughs> Guys, it's been really fun, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, we'll check right. out that podcast. Yeah. We're not uh we are <laughs> we love everyone for who they are. We are not prejudiced, but we are judgmental. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. That's fine. So you're my dad. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> if you want, so that's the kind of relationship. You guys you over want. at Derp said they were my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Derp daddies. Hashtag. Oh my god. I need that oh, as a boy. bumper sticker now. Derp fam is my dad. <laughs> well, we should make a clan that. Yes. Derp fam is my dad. <laughs> to rival the old Bungie is my dad clan. <laughs> we could do it. Well, there's uh, one million things that you know now about Damfinity. Yes. I'm and so we're going to talk some news now. You ready? Ready. Oh, the news. Yes. All right. Let's talk about this week at Bungie. Dude, I couldn't get over it. At the summit, several of the developers, I forgot to mention this last week, they kept saying TWAB. And it TWAB? Was like, what? Ugh. TWAB. TWAB. TWAB, guys, come yes. on. TWAB? Have to no. correct yeah. their own yeah. nomenclature. A handful of them <laughs> were, were saying TWAB. And like, wait a it's, second, like, it's like showing up. And they call themselves Boonji or something. You're like, what? Welcome to Boonji. Welcome to Boonji. <laughs> it's like, what was your, what were your thoughts on the summit? How did it go? Was it what you wanted it to be? I mean, it was okay. Everybody kept saying twab, so yeah. I had to head out a little early. <laughs> Everybody kept saying Destiny too, and I was really weirded out. <laughs> I had to go. <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. So this week at Bungie, they introduced us to Warmind, and God, get ready. This is the longest twab I think they've ever written. <laughs> Dude, they're it's like 26, they're all about the meaty words. twabs. They uh, resurrected Tolstoy for this one. Let's get into it. They did. Uh, they talk all about what we saw. We we kind of cruised through the uh, the stream last week because we we put out a a, sh a a day late show. So we've already talked about what you saw on the stream last week. So we're not gonna. I'm going to rehash that too much, um, but they brought a lot of new information about uh, what we're going to see in Season 3, more detailed information. So one of those is Exotic Masterworks, which we were, oh boy, people were getting fairly curious about. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're talking about the implementation. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of give you the the TLDR, Delon didn't read of this. Um, basically, they wanted to ensure that exotics, uh, the the process of acquiring masterwork exotics was not having to obtain the exotic again. Um, they wanted to make it, I think, in some ways, a direct path um, to get it, even though they're not revealing what all those paths are to receive the masterwork exotics uh but it's not it's not based on like a drop uh it's based on things that you can complete in mm -hmm. the game which i think is cool um they don't want us to have like a ton of quests sitting in our 
uh, <laughs> inventory either, which I'm very happy to, that they're going to work around that. So uh, essentially what they're going to do is there's going to be one exotic masterwork per weapon that exists so far in Destiny 2. Uh, in order to start that process, they have to find an exotic masterwork catalyst. So when you inspect it, there will be a hint at what activities you can grant or what activities you can complete to grant the catalyst for that weapon. Um, not all masterwork exotic catalysts have the same drop rates. Um, some are guaranteed after a certain amount of engagement, and others are earned at random. So there's going to be some uh, RNG in some cases, but at least you'll know what you have to do, or you'll be able to get on the right track for what you'll have to do to obtain these. Yeah, a lot of people so, are excited because it's going to kind of filter in that community teamwork to figure some of this stuff mm -hmm. out. Um, yeah, and we'll get to this coming up, but it also adds... Uh, you know, I think some are going to be more difficult than others. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Which I'm yep. stoked for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give us something yeah. to chase and something that feels valuable, right? Chase and grind, man. Yeah. That's what the name is. Yeah. I got to say, dude, like a couple weeks ago, I tweeted like, okay, how many of you would rather have more depth on legendary masterworks and hold off on exotic masterworks? I got to say, I'm, I'm glad they didn't do that mm -hmm. uh, because what this is seems very cool. I saw a neat post on Reddit this week talking about the way they did this really kind of caters to the casual, air quotes, player yeah. and the hobbyist player because while you can get it, um, get the exotic, you know, fairly, I won't say quickly, but fairly easily, mm -hmm. um, you will have this layer of it that definitely makes it more geared towards the hobbyist yeah. Destiny player. Yeah. So, well, because very cool. it becomes like the parts, the parts unknown section. You know what I mean? Like, right? Yeah. So, gives you some ownership yeah. of the exotic, especially if it's one of your favorites. I you went know? and did fifty strikes in the heroic playlist, and I got this catalyst to drop yeah. finally. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. that's and a then story. you start the second tier of it, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a story though, and the, like the best games have stories to them, and this is mm -hmm. yeah, this gives you that. Well, yeah, I think when you talk about if you, if you ask Guardians about their favorite, what was your favorite moment in Destiny One? It'll be one of two things. It'll either be an experience they had with their friends, mm -hmm. like something crazy happened, a clutch moment, whatever, or It'll be like, oh, that moment that I got the Gallahorn and the Vex to drop on Atheon together for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. something. And they're like, that was the moment. Like, that was the coolest thing that ever happened in the game. And so the more that you allow those moments to happen, I think it, it, it enriches the player experience. Mm -hmm. For in sure. In kind of a, a, a way that's tough to quantify, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on to like the deeper level of this. So once you get the catalyst, it immediately enables orb generation on double kills for the weapon. Okay, so similar to what we have in existing masterworks. However, um, there's the next level, which is after applying the catalyst, which happens in the weapon preview screen, there's then bounty-like objectives that need to be completed to upgrade to the final masterwork state, my final form, <laughs> which applies stat and perk bonuses to the weapon. Ooh. Now, they have a preview of this. We're looking at an example with Cold Heart. Uh, and it shows complete objectives unlocked, defeat enemies using Cold Heart to unlock this up upgrade. It has a little progress bar of enemies defeated. So I think at that point, you'll know pretty straightforwardly, okay, what do I have to do to to get this thing to be Super Saiyan Cold Heart? Mm -hmm. You know? It's over 9,000. So this I is cool. It. Um, it mentions some, some will have you do one thing, others will have multiple steps. They'll vary in difficulty and length, but not be determined by RNG. The goal for these objectives is to push the player to engage with the weapon that they wish to make into a full masterwork. When it comes to difficulty... There's a few exotic masterworks paired with difficult activities or accomplishments in game. We're expecting there may be one or two that give the players the opportunity to set goals in mastering specific activities in order to earn their most desired masterwork. So 
a couple things they wanted to, to head off. Um, you only have to do this once per account. Um, duplicate drops of exotic weapons will um, retain your progress on the upgrade state. Uh, it takes place fully in the weapon details screen. There's no objectives outside of that that you have to keep up with. Um, not all of the masterworks will be available when season three starts. So if you inspect an exotic weapon in a masterwork socket, it's not visible. That catalyst is not yet available and they are not publishing guides on how to acquire these, which is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited about this. Yeah, man. This is, um, you know, we talked a lot since destiny Two about, how as they've kind of um, set foundational systems for different things, how they can add depth. And this is a really great example of them, I think, adding some depth to the game that will make it more fun, uh, more to invest in, but totally optional, you know, so Mm -hmm. every player doesn't have to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm excited to see like what kind of cool ways they'll, you know what? What what are the stat bonuses going to be like on these things, and what what is their final form? <laughs> yeah, like this uh, to me, man, is like you know they they come and go with systems and different iterations of things that they put into the game. This to me is a substantial one, mm-hmm. one that I could see continuing uh, throughout because this is a yeah. neat way to do it uh, for sure with the exotics. I think. Well, and they they kind of did something like this almost with the legend of Acreus where, mm-hmm. you know, you obtain it first and it, it has, it doesn't have all the perks and stats in it. You just hold one in the chamber and then you move forward and you do some more objectives and then you get one more in the chamber and you get all the stats and then you move even further to the last thing and you get a cool ornament for it. And so it was kind of like an evolution of the gun and you didn't have to go all the way through it but it kind of built the gun out to be better and better as you completed it. And um, that would be really cool if they're able to do like now building new exotics, knowing that they can have different levels or an evolution of the gun as you Mm -hmm. get like the masterwork or this and that, like it gives them the ability to do some interesting things. Mm-hmm. with exotics overall you know yeah and it also kind of f- feels like yeah uh, what was what was the gun in in d1 that needed the crux of crota um uh the um necrochasm, I, necrochasm. I, yes um it kind of feels a little bit like that too because you need yeah it does. you need the catalyst and you know what activity you need to go and do and yeah. then so that builds and then oh my goodness now you have to do a bunch of bounties <laughs> mm-hmm. to keep it rolling mm-hmm. that's yeah that but that was fun and rewarding yeah when you got the thing exactly and people know that you worked hard for it so if you had it it was a it was a badge too mm-hmm. you yeah. know yeah i have to say man i've been listening to a bunch of different stuff this week destiny related and so i don't forget uh, we'll talk about it more here when we talk about ranked here shortly. But like this, man, to get this in a week, um, mm-hmm. this has like everyone keeps pointing to fall for the Destiny hobbyist. But man, we are getting some stuff on May eighth that really there's, does there's cater gonna to be the a hobbyist. lot of stuff that's going to keep yeah. us busy over the summer. Yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. You know, between Definitely. like things that that are totally optional, but they they have depth. Things that you can do. And then you have ranked and you have privates and mm-hmm. you, like, there's going to be a lot more options. De- thing is destiny is not a game that's short on activities. It's not a game mm-hmm. that's short on stuff to do. It's just the a incentive. game that's short on reasons to do. Them. Yeah. Yep. The, the reward. And section exactly. Was, and we're getting, yeah. we're getting a substantial yeah. uh, amount of incentive come May so 8th. It, you know, it doesn't take much for them to, to, build in base features like this just like they do with the nightfall to suddenly give all that content meaning and you're like wow there's a lot to do all of a sudden mm-hmm. because there's a reason to go do it like 
whatever that is, whatever that carrot is. It was, it was all like, okay, here's this huge field that needs to be plowed. And if you plow it, you'll get all this corn. But is, but people were like, well, yeah, but I'm not hungry. I live next to McDonald's. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? Oh my goodness. But, but then they were like, well, I'm going to give you seeds to make like hamburgers instead. And you're like, oh, I really like hamburgers. Okay. I can plow the field now. You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> the lack of a better so analogy. <laughs> Grew up on a farm. Uh, can confirm. Way. Can confirm. I I did grow up in the country, guys. Sorry <laughs> to say, I'm, I'm I'm a lot more redneck than you might think. I did as well. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm right there with you. Interview um, cyborg. I have to up assume because you're from Damn. flyover states. So exactly, exactly. Nobody uh, wanted that's to why come I used here. The corn reference. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a theme park in Indiana called Indiana Beach. And the slogan was a crow saying, there's more than corn in Indiana. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Get out of here. I need to go like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. It took us on, no. a, on a little side quest. Tangents there. are perfectly fine around here. People are used to them. <laughs> uh, next up, we we're talking about. We talked about these a little bit last week, but they uh, they dove into some details on some more of the exotic changes. Um, particularly this week, they were talking about Tractor Cannon, Hard Light, and Borealis. Um, so Tractor Cannon, they, we got a preview of this when we talked about it on the last show, but uh, they mentioned that it's a really fun game to play with, but it has really low utility. Mm-hmm. Um so they quantified what the change we're getting is, is any target hit by tractor cannon has a debuff applied that adds suppression and makes the target vulnerable to void damage for 10 seconds. So suppression works just like a suppressor grenade or anything else uh, that you would expect. Like in the crucible, this is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this will shut down active supers and prevent players from using their abilities. Just wait until Shake gets his hands on this. Oh, my my gosh. Dusty Fun Police, if you're not familiar, (laughs) is going to have a ball with this gun. I can't wait to shut down Golden Guns with this. Dude, along with all these exotic changes, like it really feels like its own unique, Mm -hmm. special exotic now. Like It seems really cool. Uh, PvE, it puts them in suppression state where they cower and grovel. And then the Vold vulnerability adds a significant weakness to any source of incoming void damage. Um, You run it with your favorite void weapons or subclass. If you're running with a fire team, and they mentioned we're both excited and terrified to see how you can, how fast you can melt some of our harder bosses with strategic void attacks. Uh, The vulnerability does not stack with itself, but it does stack with other damage debuffs. I'm pretty excited about this. (laughs) Like what one great example. So we were running the prestige raid this week. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're running a void lock in the dogs encounter, mm-hmm. there's like two ways that you can just absolutely melt <laughs> dogs. If you're running void Walker, like you can run either tree. If you run the bottom one, that, uh, that, that super will knock out like, 90% of their health. If you run the top tree, you can charge a scatter grenade. Mm-hmm. And one of one of our players accidentally killed a dog <laughs> because it did so much damage. <laughs> wow. So I'm just imagining like people running in like groups of three with void and attractive cannon. <laughs> just like I I can't wait to see how this is gonna turn out. Uh I just it's gonna be just gross. But how fun is that, you know? Like Oh, it's cool. Yeah. They're not really afraid neat. to let us do some mm-hmm. fun, crazy stuff. And that was that was always what made Destiny 1 like so unique with abilities and how you could work together, you know, when they introduced things like tether and and other, you know, buffs that you can stack and how you would come up with creative ways to tackle an encounter mm-hmm. and okay, now you're going to use your void tether and you're going to tether them and then we're going to, Warlocks are going to throw a grenade that does, you know, this stack damage and then we're going to hit them with a, a Celestial Nighthawk mm-hmm. and you just like melt things. But it made it so fun to be able to get that just right, you know? Because it became a dance. like Yeah. Um, a coordinated thing. 
more axis. It's not qu- quite like a, a MMO, but the principles of the teamwork involved, you know, mm-hmm. like axis is a perfect example of that. Yeah. Like you had everybody figuring out, okay, well I'll tether him here and uh, make sure mm-hmm. that you're attacking the legs. If you pop a bubble, like an empowering bubble, yep. like we can, yeah. And yep. just the whole nine. That was yeah. such an intricate thing that you had to be able They're to They're giving off. us some more of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So next up, they talk about hard light. And we know, we were mentioning this before, we're getting uh, double damage mm-hmm. on bouncing projectiles. Um, they mentioned that they consider preserving aim assist for the lifetime of the projectile, which would have been just <laughs> insane and disgusting. <laughs> But they mentioned they couldn't commit due to the sheer amount of pressure this would put on the runtime engine. Example would be, imagine 12 players on a console in 6v6, all using this weapon, each player firing around every three frames, and our aim assist code trying to predict the trajectory of each bullet for up to three bounces and then attempt to correct it to hit a target. I mean, that just stresses me out reading it. (laughs) And that's supposed to run on your Xbox or PlayStation. So they didn't do that. So <laughs> they made it so bounce bullets do double damage, which should be interesting. And oh then, uh, of course, the uh, inheriting the Borealis damage type reload swap, holding reload will cycle elemental damage types in combat, which is going to make this gun so fun to use in Nightfalls and any PvE activity with shields involved. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. And then they mention how they're going to improve Borealis because, well, you don't want to discount Borealis for, you know, all the value that the special PlayStation players get with their exclusives. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, boy. I haven't gotten on that horse in a long time, but boy, hey, still hey. rides the it's same. not like we're getting anything with Warmind also. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. Oh, right. we are. They just haven't talked about it. Oh, they don't want to do piss anybody okay. off. Oh, they mentioned it. <sighs> so, Borealis, after you break an enemy shield with a matching damage type, it now deals double damage Body until shots. the next reload or damage type swap. Wow. Body shot kills. Yep. All day that long. That means it does confirm you'll have a body shot kill. Uh, in PvP, but I think that's that's only going to really be effective if you kill an, a guardian while they're in their super. Super, mm-hmm. it's going to be challenging. Just tough to pull, pull off as it is, but you know, if you can do that, great. You know, just kill whoever you want. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're just going to do it anyways. Uh, for PvE activities, though, that that gives it some some interesting. Uh, capabilities for strategy. Um, I just wish I had a PlayStation to use it. Hey, you do. Oh, did you I do, but it? I'm not buying. I, okay, I'm, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I can't play this game on three systems. Uh, it's not possible. Come on. So, uh, are you looking forward to the uh, the cheesiness in PvP that is uh, the old one hit? Body shot with the sniper. Oh my god! Dude, I will totally try to pull. Y'all it remember off. the yes, final right. round days? Do you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, god. I like screaming on the show and loading in a lot when that was a thing. I'm sweating yeah. a lot right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> we all have PTSD from that. Oh my god! I just can't. <laughs> like, I remember loading in and looking to see if any of the three guardians. Had that old sniper. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and you can I, bet at yep. least one person yep. did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> at least well, this is a challenge to be able to pull it yeah. off. So. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to be able to some, yeah. have some skill to get that uh, to get that advantage. So, so that's the thing. So those are some updates on exotic weapons that are coming. Um, they mention maybe next week this coming reset they'll have some more development videos to share so look forward to those on bungie 
uh, at Bungie on Twitter. Next up, uh, tell us about some of these updates on glory, valor, and combat, Arrow. Oh, yes. Dude, I've been getting more and more hyped <laughs> for ranked. Like, my initial thought with ranked was are. that we were going to get, like, we were going to get a number, and that was it. And the number was just going to go up as we played, right. and that's pretty much mm-hmm. the depth. Well, there's quite a bit more than that. Um, this is what I was talking about with the, the Destiny hobbyists, you know, so exotics maybe more so on the pve side uh of course ranked pvp will cater to the the destiny pvp hobbyist and as we know we talked about last week there is going to be uh two different systems i still can't seem to get it straight but valor is for uh the quick play playlist and glory is for competitive valor will increase just on match completions Uh, And Glory is the super competitive one that will increase uh, with wins and decrease with losses. And it's skill-based matchmaking in that competitive playlist, so it's going to get sweaty. Um, That's for sure. But uh, there will also be Decay on the Glory. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you have to play at least three matches um, per week to stop that Decay from happening. Um and uh which is interesting i'm glad there's a decay and i'm glad there's a way to prevent it Mm -hmm. uh, because it does always stink when you're not able to play and you're like great i hit max rank and i can't play this week so i'm not going to be max rank the next time i log on so it was nice to see that there's a way to prevent that um Actually, before we get into glory too much, uh, Valor, a little bit more on Valor there. It caps out at 2,000 rank points. Um, both uh, Valor and Glory will have win streak bonuses, I believe up to five streak. Um, and then the neat thing about Valor on the quick play side is you can uh, reset it um, each season. or Sorry, it resets each season, but you can actually reset it uh, when you hit max yourself. Um, there's ornaments, emblems, and weapon rewards for the Valor. Um, and let's see here. Moving on to Glory. Um, again, there's ornament, emblem, and weapon rewards. Uh, the big excitement is that when you reach, I believe, the Fabled rank, you get, uh, Redri- is it Redrick's? Is that right? Redrick's Claymore. Claymore, that's right. Which is a pulse rifle, slow firing, but it has a perk on there called Desperado we talked about last week a little bit that actually increases its rate of fire but still does the same amount of damage. So it's going to be pretty beast-like in the Crucible. And we're hoping from what it, uh, at least I'm hoping, from what it seems like it's going to be rather challenging to get to that fabled rank but that's not the max rank in glory uh, you can go further to mythic and then ultimately legend which i am glad some people are asking why they they, th- they thought mythic should be above legend but of course bungie was thinking ahead and you are wanting to become legend <laughs> um so uh, I, cheesy or not i am glad they did that <laughs> i did ask um uh, the guy that's kind of shooting all this stuff out is, uh, I know his Twitter handle, but what is his first name? Kevin? Is it Kevin, I believe? Kevin. Yes. Kevin. Yes. His Kevin uh, Twitter handle is Tocom11, which I can't help but think of SOCOM when I uh, read his Twitter. Sorry. It's just one letter, man, but it's so close, right? I know. <laughs> Anyways, all right. I did ask him because I was curious. Let me read my tweet here. I said, hey, dude. Reading the TWAB, does this mean you only, uh, sorry, three games each reset will actually contribute to your rank number changing and the rest of the play is to prevent decay? And then I asked him, you can also get bonus points. Um, so you guys help me think this out here. He added to his massive thread, go look him up again. It's at TOCOM11, T-O-C-O-M-11. He's got a long thread. Uh, I think pinned to his profile of where he's just added and added depending on what questions that he's gotten. But he says, to uh, to clarify, the glory weekly bonus decay for those in Guardian, Brave, Heroic, and Fabled. Each week, players will be granted bonus rank points for completing matches in the previous week. Caps out at three matches. For those in Mythic and Legend, each week players will be hit with a decay. Players can reduce or remove this decay by completing matches in the previous week. This also caps out at three matches 
This we'll remove the decay for this week. <laughs> yes. So here's the final one. This is the one that I, I, I think he answered my question. There is no cap on rank points earned and lost per week from wins and losses. The weekly bonuses and decay are only additive. So I think what he's saying is you play three matches, you prevent your decay, but you can play and play and play and it will, it will tweak your rank points, your rank actual rank in the crucible right see what i thought at first is you play three games those three games dictate your change in your rank and that's That's kind of how it sounded Mm -hmm. based on how they wrote it but right but it's not the case um it's just all about preventing that decay but you continue to play your rank will change so that's what i was hoping as well glory is only um worked on in competitive playlist yes only competitive not quick play yeah so anyway, sorry, a bunch of rambling there, but hopefully that made sense. Uh, I I could not be getting more hyped for ranked, <laughs> dude. Like I thought, again, I thought we were going to get a number when they showed us that first screenshot that could go up to 5,500 and you would just see it go like 2005, 2015. Like, okay, I'm grinding up. It's way more than that. Um, for a first iteration of ranked Crucible for the first time ever, like this is pretty legit, man. There's mm-hmm. there's different titles for each rank. There's loot tied to it. Like, of course, it can grow from this. But like for a first iteration, like I'm a I'm a crucible guy. Mm-hmm. I'm I am ready to jump in. Like I'm ready to go. Like, come Dan, on. Are you gonna be playing some of this uh, crucible ranked? I oh, man, I've got to decide how much time I want to devote to it because I I personally am not that big of a of, of a PvP guy. Um, mm-hmm. I've been I've been getting more into it with D two. I I find that f- so, and, and I've said this before somewhere else. Um, I can't remember, but like, so the team shot meta is kind of my thing. Uh, you're talking to somebody who is in the top three percent of assisted kills in Destiny one. So, uh, <laughs> it's uh, interesting. Thing. Yeah. Um, thank you, Destiny Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For that stat. But uh yeah, it uh that was kind of my thing. Um so I've been I've been liking how how it plays. I I understand like the 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 issues that other that other more talented <laughs> like people have with the team shot meta, but um yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much of it how much of it I'll be I'll be sinking my time into. I know there's a bunch of people in like the the current meta and Discord server that are really excited for it, and they're like, "All right, guys, we're gonna get together. We're gonna start grinding this out. We're gonna try to carry each other to like victory on this, which which is really cool. And I like to see that more than see my KD go up. Yeah, I've seen the feedback too, where people are like, you know, it's not gonna change the crucible if if you're not a fan of the team shooting and, and its current status. Which, granted, you know, things did change with 1.4. You know, it's it's a quicker crucible now, but they're definitely still a team play mm-hmm. mechanic. Um, but again, this will be, you know, Glory at least will be in the playlist with no radar, so it's it's a little less noticeable, but definitely still there. Yeah. I just think, you know. Uh, for any level of Crucible player, this just adds so much depth and so much value to it. Now, I, mm-hmm. I do want to ask, since you're not a big Crucible yeah. guy, do you feel like, like I mentioned earlier, other than, I mean, I guess an, an example would be the exotic Masterwork Catalyst stuff. Is there as much, do you feel like there's as much for you in the May 8th update? Not the expansion, mm-hmm. but the update for like being a hobbyist Destiny player, if if you're not much of a crucible guardian i mean like do you th- you you hand you hand me a new destiny i'm gonna play like hours yeah. of it <laughs> <laughs> so like ev- for sure regardless like i may not be good at crucible but i will play it on stream and yeah. ju- just to kind of you know so there's value there yeah, for you to shoot shoot the biz with my buds and yeah and it's kind of nice there's a quick play kind of more casual version mm-hmm. of it and then a more hardcore version of it um uh, yeah so. And the fact that you can prestige the the quick play, that's yeah, that's cool, interesting. Man. Like, yeah. I, I want to s- see more things like that. 
I would love to. I forget why they said too you'd want to do that. I think it was maybe because you didn't get the drop you wanted, mm -hmm. right? There's certain rewards that require multiple resets. Okay. That's cool. So the wording is requires a fixed number of valor resets to earn some rewards. Yeah. See, I like that. So that could either be done over multiple seasons or if you play a lot, you can just go ahead and reset your rank. Mm hmm. To get those rewards sooner. See, I like that it's a lot. Brilliant. Yeah. Man. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Like it's it, just cool. They didn't just say let's throw a number in. Like they're I mean, to be able yeah. to prestige like mm -hmm. that, I mean, it's uh, for a first iteration, man, like I am I'm genuinely pumped. I, I, I like haven't ready to played go. a lot of D two Crucible compared to D one. Mm -hmm. But even I am interested in in just giving this a go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, at least like on the Valor side. Uh, just to see, you know, just like, just see, you know, yeah. does this give it some more fun? Is the, are the rewards going to look cool and be cool? Like, will there be some fun guns? Uh, will this maybe bring out more players to the crucible, which means that there's more, you know, there's a bigger pool of people playing. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. more friends to buddy up with and play. There's, there's kind of a, uh, a, a reason to be there doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, outside of just, of course, the fun of it, but yeah, yeah. The other exciting thing too we can't forget is uh, their changes with the crucible maps. Everybody's going to be in the same yeah. same pool. We're not going to be segregated by DLC and stuff. Yeah. So now, which I love I don't that remember, change. but is is I th I want to say you you have to have the expansion to do ranked, right? No, I think no. you have to. You, you only have to have the expansion to to pick it in private matches. Yeah. Okay, yep. which yep. Okay. which is an amazing change. Which is something yeah, that's that they huge. absolutely had to do, dude. Like, yeah, and I was, you know, I was listening to um another podcast this week, and they were, you know, they were saying like, finally they did this. But I'm like, dude, I don't think Call of Duty ever did no. this. And it always drove me crazy, dude. The, My the, friends, like, I think the only thing I've seen stuff like this is is uh, like gears. Mm -hmm. you yeah, could they would they would do rotating maps. Like if you mm -hmm. didn't have the expansion, they would have like maybe it was two weeks, and they would have a certain number of the gated maps that you could play in. Mm -hmm. You could match make in, and then they would change it. You know, so if you wanted to play them all the time you would have to buy the expansion. Like, that's the only game I've seen done something like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, that's huge, man. Yeah. And it's kind of one of those things, like, once they do it, they can't really go back, you know? We always talk about that at my work. It's like, well, I don't think once you take somebody off the Saturday rotation, you can't put them back yeah. on the Saturday rotation. <laughs> so, it's, so it's like, they can't really go back from this. Uh, yeah. And this is a big deal, yeah. you know? And like we said, whatever the motivation was right now to, to maybe – get the population built back up like who cares like this is fantastic yeah. you don't have yeah. to have have to have the dlc to to jump in and play these mm -hmm. maps with everybody what's cool when was the last time you you guys jumped into the osiris playlist because oh, i'm struggling to remember a time because i i always yeah. just jump into the regular quick play because th that's where more people yeah. are same yep it's the same yeah uh, i 100 percent. i have a time or two mm -hmm. but yeah just by default i just jump Straight into the normal quick. Play. I had somebody. I had somebody call me out on stream the other day. I I I put us into the the Osiris one on accident, like just because. <laughs> like I try to pay as much attention as I can, but when you're when you're dealing with chat and you're dealing with playing a game and you're also dealing with the oh, party yeah. chat uh, as well and trying to sometimes keep, things are on autopilot. Oh, you you got to keep that ecosystem very very gingerly balanced and <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I hit the Osiris and they're like. What the hell are you doing, bro? Get us get us out of there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It'll just take us another like minute. It's fine. Normal quick play. Yeah, exactly. Normal quick play, please. Defaults. <laughs> yeah. What are you thinking? <laughs> Next yeah, that's, up that's in the deal. um in the twab <laughs> oh, <boy>. they <laughs> talk about and when I see they PvP design Derek Carroll. Design lead Derek Carroll uh, talks about some changes to matchmaking. Um, essentially, from looking at data, they have seen that solo queue players are winning fewer than half of their games. That's that's a pertinent stat because one that 
Bungie is always, always mentioned when they talk about matchmaking the Crucible is that they want players to, on average, win and lose 50-50. Mm-hmm. To them, that means that their matchmaking is performing properly. So if solo players are losing less than half, that means that there's a problem there. Uh, so what they're doing is they're going to make some changes to how skill value is measured when in a fire team. So they're going to use a modified value that takes your fire team size into account. The larger the fire team, the larger the potential modification. We don't want to try to completely nullify the benefit of team play, so our initial values are conservative and can and will be tuned as we see the WIS system working in the wild. Uh, and they mentioned all this can be done server-side without updates. Um, so I think the idea is to change the modifiers on team play so that people queuing solo, I'm thinking this will take into account more the skill level of the of a team you could possibly play against mm-hmm. and potentially put you in more matches with other solo queue players Well, and ha- based on the skill and how that factors into matchmaking. And, and so he, he says for those like me who didn't understand uh, the hashtag, he drops down hashtag FTMM. This means fire team matchmaking. However you want to interpret that. <laughs> I, I, my guess is that you just if you're if you're solo queuing you're gonna see more solo other solo queue players mm-hmm. if you're if you're fire team queuing you're gonna see other fire teams more often. There's just people that complain about oh I hate playing against stack teams. I yeah my personal opinion is like yeah that's that's online like competitive shooters mm-hmm. like <laughs> you're gonna have a better experience if you go in and play with a team if you solo queue like okay great yeah. if that's how you can play yeah. but that's to your disadvantage i have thought about that with rank too man like when i go I, I can already see it like going in to grind glory rank you're not probably going to want to go in solo, right so no. because it's it, yeah it's going to get no. sweaty real <laughs> but quick i mean there. that's part of it like if you want to progress in rank to like yep you're going to want to go in with a strong team that gives you a better advantage mm-hmm but I can see how it, that that could be detrimental to the experience for people as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess at least there's for for now we'll say at least it appears as though there's a casual option when it comes. Yeah, they're to trying to the take rate. that into account yeah. at least yeah. to an extent. So, do you think that there's like an in like there's a way that they could represent that in game? Like, say like say you have you you give each player like a score. Of one to one to like a hundred, right? And so when you match into a team, you'd be able to see their score from like whatever that number is on a scale. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah. Like I mean that way you'd be like, Okay, well this this team that we're matching up against, they're a two fifty five and we're a three fifty for sure. Right. Yeah. I don't I don't sense. think they would ever show that. Okay. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like because more under the hood type thing. Yeah, they've they've since Destiny is released, they've always been like they don't want to show what like in Destiny you have like a quote unquote true skill. Right. Like but they they've never wanted to show that in the game to people for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And uh I doubt that they would they would make that change, but you're going to have some transparency. Once people start to get ranks, mm-hmm. you're going to start to see who you're queuing against, like what, <laughs> yeah. what their ranks are, <laughs> you know, like, cause people are going to wear that Yeah, and you're going to know, like, oh, I just queued against a bunch of, like, I have a full team, stack team of mythics here. Like I know what I'm up against. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So we'll start to see that. It'll just look a little different than a number, like mm-hmm. you mentioned. I, I mean, I wouldn't be against that. Like, I would love to know that. Yeah. But I think it would like, you know, for the same reason they remove quality connection bars. Oh, in Destiny yeah. 2. Like, they don't <laughs> want to give people a reason to complain. <laughs> you know? <Yeah>. That's. <laughs> I forgot I mean, as, about as, that. You don't have to give much to give the Destiny community. Yeah. I mean. 
we're an amazing that community, sucks, but <laughs> like, that's, that's how they like to do things. <laughs> well, uh, we've got the return, this reset of Iron Banner, final Iron Banner for, Banner for season two, uh, starts Tuesday, May 1st, games control. Um, they do mention that with 6v6, uh, we can expect Iron Banner to feature 6v6 control exclusively moving into Season 3. So, lucky for us, hopefully that means no uh, Iron Banner supremacy. Sorry to deflate anybody that's weird and likes that. Oh my God. <laughs> what, whatever, like, masochist that is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, last chance to get your season two Iron Banner ornaments, so jump in and try to work on those if you're interested in that. And uh, yeah, see the Saladin one more time. They talk about some stuff in Destiny Player Support dealing with error codes. That you can check out if you've had any problem with zebras. And then our movies of the week. Uh, that was long twab though. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was. There's a couple of banners for um, War Mine. In the TWAB, if you're into banners, Twitter look pretty banners. cool. And that's it for this week at Bungie. There's a couple other things that you uh, you pulled out, Arrow, that were just little tidbits of stuff that people have caught since the stream. You want to run us through a few of these things? Yeah, yeah, we can just run through them real quick. War Mine spoiler uh, again, though, just uh, things that. Uh, Bungie and other content creators have found, whether it be the press kit or just little tidbits that they've picked up on. Um, but a uh, little lore thing, as we saw in the reveal prologue, Anna Bray is Anastasia. She's an MD. Um, people caught on to that pretty quick. We also got to see the director and the Mars patrol map area. Uh, people figured out real quick, if you zoom in, on the lower right, or just look on the lower right. You don't have to zoom in necessarily. <laughs> there is a zero of 45 collectibles, a uh, little ticker down there. So some sort of collectible going on possibly in the patrol area. There were some images too of like these little, some kind of um, little red hologram looking things. Yeah, so. like a little hologram. And it looked like in several of the screenshots, the guardian was shooting them. So I don't know if yeah. that's how you activate mm -hmm. or collect them. Um, so that's cool. We'll I take just that. Hope they're like calcified fragments, man. Just do that. Same. Yeah, with some lore behind them. Yeah, yeah. and then and then uh, hopefully some the sort of substantial reward thing. at the end. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, please. There's a couple different uh, sets that we're gonna get. We're getting a Braytech weapon set and Aikilos weapon set. Um, and there's all kinds of, uh, well, before I say that one, uh, if you guys want to go out and take a look, there are many uh, uh, videos covering all the exotics that we're getting. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's still some we don't know about, but there's many returning, like Soros is returning and uh, Armamentarium's returning, but there's quite a few new ones. We covered that a little bit last week, but uh, you guys can go out and look at that. We won't s spoil it all for you here now if, you if you'd like. There are two before... We get to the previous bullet point, uh, Cyborg. There are PS exclusives. There's a strike and an armor set for each class. I don't uh, know if we're going to get a special exotic or not, but there's I at least I get the most those upset things. about the strikes because they're such a yeah. big piece of it, it, content. Yeah. yeah, it does stink, man, because you only get two and we get three. And three seems like a good... Um, I, yep. I'm, I'm totally joking on, on giving you trouble about this because it does stink. We've said this many times. Like, why? Why are we still doing this? PlayStation exclusive stuff because it's not like oh cyborg I get to play this new strike for a month like back in the Call of Duty yeah. days you don't get it dude basically like you basically don't get it um, because after a year it's like okay what is what is gonna transpire well, and then in that we've event? had times where it was like two years yeah. yeah they don't put any dating on this stuff it's frustrating yeah. it's interesting I would have thought it would have stopped by yeah. now. Um, and then, you know, an armor set for each class. I mean, granted, in the past, they haven't been the the best-looking armor sets, but it's still a matter of fact that uh, we're, we're getting that content just for owning a speaking PlayStation. Of, uh, speaking of Gundams, that Titan set looks like a Gundam. <laughs> it looks like a Power Ranger villain. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. That I makes sense. That. There's a lot of speculation. Uh, Power <laughs> villain... 
hey, there you go. Japanese. You know, there's just a lot of t- things tying together here. A lot of here. things tying together. There's a lot of speculation and, and no one... People really think they have fully confirmed it because they throw up side-by-side images. But what I'm talking about here is that people are highly speculating that sleep uh, Sleeper Simulant is mm-hmm. coming back. Um, there's a lot of weapon design types that look a lot like it, but in, in a couple particular screenshot images and you throw it side by side with an mm-hmm. old image like people really think that it's coming well, back that's that's so, the uh, Akelos, I, yeah. like weapon design like right right yeah lore yep. wise that so that just makes sense for the shotgun to look like yeah. a sleeper but i mean it is funny i saw uh i think i watched uh maybe one of houndish's videos mm-hmm. this week and he was focusing on uh anna bray's gun because it's yeah. not any of the other ones we've seen and, and people are speculating that's going to be hopefully that there was another screenshot of a, an actual player guardian um holding mm-hmm. what looked to be her gun and it's like everybody's focusing on sleep sleeper simulant like let's talk about this other yeah. gun that we've never right. had before <laughs> well, yeah it's just funny how people jump onto well, things there's a whole like this this past week i know bibble uh bibletron uh on on twitter he uh he's he's a friend of mine also a member of like my clan and he was just like anna's anna bray is dead he latched onto that <laughs> let's talk about that hard. and <laughs> right like yeah it's th- it's gonna be interesting we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see yeah. some uh some hoops being jumped through i think uh Laura yeah Wells. and that's what you know that's a lot of chatter too is like this may 8th is is forming up nicely to uh, it it easily to be excited about everything we're getting whether it be the the patch and the Mm -hmm. content um it looks like they're definitely putting some additional layers in here compared to that we're used to versus you know what we got with curse of osiris but people are still wondering like okay like we're hopeful we're gonna get some sort of substantial story but it's like are we gonna get like one of those curse type stories where it's just like on the surface, and then you know, I'm I guess a if we can cow, if the yeah, story doesn't get it together. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I hope so too. I just really wonder, like, of everything that's coming, I- I'm hopeful, but of everything that's coming, and it looks like all the layers we're getting that we've, you know, become accustomed to want in an expansion. I really do hope that the uh, the story, you know, is is substantial and has some depth to it. But we'll see, we'll see. Yes. Uh, one thing we saw on Twitter from at Daniel out a bungee dev. Uh, he confirmed that the old raids meaning, uh, Leviathan and eater of worlds are going to have their drops buffed to help get you to 380 by running them. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the, the, of course the power level or challenge requirement of those will not be increased, but the drops yeah. will. Yeah. So, so I know people, cool. if, you, if you go look at that thread, they're like, wait a second, you're slowing down power leveling, but we can go do the old raids at the old power level. It's like that kind of defeats yeah. the purpose. And I think he went on to say like, well, no, not really, because you can only do it so many times mm-hmm. to get that increased. Yeah. And then also, yeah, loot. there's there's a hard cap on your, um, so say like the prestigious leviathan like it's at 300 Mm -hmm. you you can there's a there's a limit at which your power level affects your ability to do more damage like there's a a cap on stuff like that so it's not like oh i ran in in 380 and i did five times as much damage (laughs) because 380 doesn't work that way yeah it has not like you can run it five times it has a top of the delta yeah I'm glad, yeah. though, that they're relevant, dude, because I, as you know, I, I've been lacking in my raid runs since uh, any of this PV, PvP stuff. Well, basically since Trials dropped however many years ago now, but um, I'm glad <laughs> that they're still relevant because then I don't have to beg people to go back and do them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'll get something for doing them, you yeah. know? Uh, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Um, another interesting development that happened today, we're recording on a Sunday, which is April 30, or... April 29th, just like the clock, it's past midnight. Uh, <laughs> he was tweeting out uh, a few different things, some some cryptic codes 
uh, hexadecimal codes, you know, letters and numbers, long series of letters and numbers, a uh, picture of a rabbit, a picture of Aurora, uh, a link to a voice uh, or an audio file of a, a, a woman saying words in Russian that were yes. letters and numbers. <laughs> I don't know if you said this was uh, Christopher Barrett doing this game. Yes. Director, yeah. So, yeah. Director of Destiny 2. Getting everybody all riled up on a Sunday afternoon. Right. And uh, luckily enough, through the communities banding together, these, it was two different messages, as I understand it, were um, decoded. They are in the vein of the typical war mind chatter that you might be used to reading in things like the grimoire from destiny one um this first one multiple distributed polaris axons report increased sterile neutrino patterning 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 correlating to an increase in avg polaris temp uh i don't have the second one in front of me but it had something to do with an increase in um basically chitin which is what the hive are made of um so we just got some interesting messages from the war mines um kind of letting us know hey there's some stuff about to go down (laughs) dude i just had a thought this week as well like i wish remember back when you used to get like a a live event when dls before Mm -hmm. dlc Mm -hmm. like an arg man that was remember the prowling wolves those heralding events oh yeah everybody's wondering if on reset if we're gonna get a heralding event like some man Maybe some war mines dropping from the sky, some high. That would be a good those. way to start. I miss those. That would yeah. be a good way to start May eighth. Let me tell you, bring it, bring it back, old school. Everybody be pumped. Well, by the time you hear this, you'll know if we have something to look forward to or not. <laughs> <laughs> this reset, but we're hopeful. I, I, that would be super fun. I've had some of the most fun in Destiny at these heralding events. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So that was the uh, the major news. There's a lot a lot to pack in that they threw at us this week, in that twab. The LC um, approaching, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm getting excited. Getting Dude, so if excited. you think about it, it, it's worth acknowledging that we've basically got a substantial patch or update a month now for three months, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's. Uh, I mean, that's it pretty. Took a while uh, to get there, but it's good. Pretty decent. Yeah. Heck yeah. Anyways, unless well, well, let me throw this to you, Mister Danfinity. Okay. How was your reset, sir? Um, it's been bonkers. It's been awesome. Uh, I've been <laughs> I've been really uh trying to take to uh both consoles, and uh I have three char- oh my. I have three characters on both, and oh man, I just got the three on Xbox. Up to three, like it, they're in their three twenties, and all of them are through the Osiris storyline. So nice. that that took. Uh, I I started right after the Go Fast update. I restarted. Okay. I restarted my character, my my hunter on there, and went fresh with three new characters. You're hitting it hard, dude. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, getting ready. Yeah, man. So I I went through with that just to kind of test how quickly you go through with the go fast update through those initial like story story missions and stuff turns out pretty quick yeah pretty quick <laughs> um but uh yeah so i i finally got them this week up to that um attempted a raid with the xbox side of the current meta uh that didn't that didn't necessarily go to plan but uh we we knocked out a bunch of stuff on the ps4 side and it's been it's been really interesting seeing uh everybody kind of getting back into activity again i i have like a i don't know if you guys do this or not so about a month and a half ago i started making a a google sheet um and there's this really awesome website called destiny 2 checklist where you can check what activities you've done each each reset and uh and also that of your entire clan and you can download it as an Excel sheet. And I basically do that. And then I transfer that over into a Google form where I have like, I can see what the average, like 
each uh, activity is attributed in a certain amount of points through the Destiny 2 wish li- or checklist. So mm-hmm. I just total those up, and each week I've been seeing what like the average point total is, and like what the um, in adding that all up to kind of see gauge certain members' activities. Like I said, we had a couple members that haven't had haven't been active for like a hundred days. Um, so they're most likely out by the time season three comes around, but like, yeah, we have had some people that just blow it out of the park, like each time each week. And so it's, it's been really interesting seeing those numbers go up and I can kind of tell when iron banner comes around because people generally tend to like be more active around that time. It's like, I'm starting to see these trends and I, I'm really excited to, take a look at them long form to see how a group of a hundred people in end up working as a group. And, yeah. uh, and it's, yeah. it's also super exciting. Like, uh, our team Matt a, shout out to him. He finally got his darkest before he's been wanting that since the beginning of season two. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, man, he just got it this week from a trials Ingram. So I need it. Congrats, yeah, man. <laughs> that's damn Arrow what you been up to this reset bud well I'm actually looking forward to the next reset so I can try out some of the 6v6 iron banner but this reset I have fit in some crucible <laughs> I've goofed around in quick play goofed around in competitive uh, I haven't got a whole lot of competitive time in yet so I'm, I'm adjusting still to that no radar um but uh, I, uh, I've also been goofing around with uh, Top Tree Sentinel. I was talking to my buddy Terry about it this week. Kami released a video a while back on uh, the top PvP subclass trees and choices. And apparently Top Tree Sentinel is pretty ridiculous, especially when you put on uh, the, the good old uh, ACDO feedback fence, you know? <laughs> uh, it becomes melee craziness. So... Anyways, been testing that out, been kind of getting my brain wrapped around PvP again, getting back on my shots so I can uh, be ready to go when ranked drops. I actually, (laughs) talking about checklists, I I made myself my own personal little checklist, which kind of took me back a little bit because I used to do that in Destiny all the time. I actually had a spreadsheet at one point I've mentioned on the show before, but I would always have like a a to-do list, like things I needed to focus on and complete mm-hmm. when I logged on. And, and I'm, I'm lagging a little behind on some of these exotic quests and I'm, I'm seeing what some of the exotics are going to be able to do in, uh, uh, after the May 8th mm-hmm. update, uh, 1.2. So I'm, I'm putting on my to-do list of like weapons that I still need to get. Call me a noob, whatever. I, I spend too much time <laughs> in the crucible, I guess, but uh, so I need to do those things. I'm also uh, trying to get that uh, the sidearm that I cannot get to drop, which is the Atana. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, apparently, you get it from the gunsmith, I guess, is the only place you can get it. Uh, cool guy. I don't know if you guys have watched or listened to Cool Guy. He's got some good content out there. He like lives by this sidearm, and it's apparently excellent with Vigilance Wing, and I, I just cannot get it to drop. I don't know. <laughs> It's like my, I mean, it's fine. It's something to chase, Mm -hmm. right? I've got like 200 weapon parts and I'm trying not to dump all of them into the gunsmith because I want to save some for after the DLC drops. Mm -hmm. Uh, But anyways, long story short, competitive, hunting some weapons. I did uh, one more little note. I don't know how it's taken me this long, but I, the Terran Tula, is that right? The linear, yeah, dude, that thing it's yeah. slick. It's in my PvP loadout. Like I it, it is like a cross between one of my favorite guns of all time, which is the Torque Bow in Gears of War. <laughs> it's like a cross between that and my most favorite gun of all time in any game ever, the No Land Beyond. Awesome. It's it is literally like a, a a combination of those two. Single shot to kill, headshot and a charging rifle. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't I've up. seen true yeah, dude. Don't be afraid I've seen, to use that thing hip fire if you're up close. Yeah. I'm I am just as well I'm, as a fusion rifle. I am fully using it. I've seen True Vanguard use mm-hmm. it a little bit, but it didn't 
really click with me. And then for whatever reason this week, I was like, you know what? I think I might like that thing. Yeah. So I threw it on and got like three kills in a matter of like eight seconds <laughs> on my first game. So I was like one, two were headshots and then like consecutive headshots. Um, and then the other was a body shot, polish them off with vigilance. And I'm like, okay, I think maybe we're going to be together for a while. I've been, oh, <laughs> but man. anyways, I've been using that yeah. in the raids. Uh, it mm-hmm. one shots projections in the suck room. Yeah. And it also one shots the uh, nets in the raid layer. So if you're looking for that specialty weapon to keep uh, people kind of focused on doing DPS, just have one guy with a tarantula just sitting in the back. And they, that thing, those weapons got pretty decent mm-hmm. buff in 1.4, yeah. right? Yeah. So PvE could they, specifically. I, I assume in PvP they would still single headshot, right? I mean, because that's a pretty, yeah, mm-hmm. pretty challenging thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, yeah, I'll, somebody, have, you get I'll have more sure. to report. <laughs> I'll have more to report on this bad boy because I'm going to be taking it, taking it into ranked with me probably. So, um, guys, one thing anyway, I, sorry, um, cyborg, go for it. I forgot to mention that was some some news this week that is very important and pertinent. Um, so over the I guess the weekend, all the copies that were leaked of Music of the Spheres oh, yeah, were dude, taken yeah. down. And the user on Reddit who was very instrumental in seeing that happen deleted his account. And everybody was like, oh, crap, what's happening? Well, he created a new account and he put out a statement. And he talked about how basically they did come a knocking. And... uh, (laughs) There is an official statement on his thread from Cosmo. He said, Hey everyone, we have plans to officially release Music of the Spheres in the near future. We'll have more details for you soon. So this is a great big deal. If you're not familiar, Music of the Spheres has been basically um, non-existent in a complete form for several years. There's about 90% of it that was used in Destiny 1, but... It was never uh, released as an album as it was intended. Uh, Music of the Spheres was developed before Destiny 1 uh, was even like a concept as a whole. Uh, mm-hmm. It was made to basically like chart the course through music of what the game could feel and sound like. Uh, and then things happened with Marty O'Donnell and a composer there, and it was never released, but a lot of the music was used in the game. Um so it's a pretty big deal that they're talking about releasing it because people have been begging for it for a while. So this is exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then he, he responded to Cosmo's comment, and he said, really? Were you planning on telling me at some point? Good news. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the big news if you're into the music of Destiny or you know any any interest in like the development and, and what that is. And I, I'm stoked. I would love oh, to yeah. own this that. Huge. Like, and have like flack copies as well, yes. like lossless. Oh man, that would be great. But anyways, uh, my reset, we finally completed the prestige raid of uh, Leviathan. Yeah. So happy to get that done. It, you know, the thing is with Prestige Leviathan, it's not a whole lot different than normal. Mm-hmm. It just adds a couple factors on a couple encounters that can make it require more of the team. And half of the reason I think we weren't getting this done is because everybody was really rusty and really rusty on that raid. Uh, but we finally knocked Callus out at like 4 a.m. last night. And... Got a lot of good loot from the whole thing. I've got like a bunch of masterworks and stuff. I got a masterwork uh, raid sniper. And I got a masterwork uh, midnight coup. Is that mm-hmm. what it's called? Yep. Pretty Man, dope little hand so cannon slow. there. Here, that thing's pretty decent in PvP. Yes. So that was exciting. So I got that done this week. Glad to have that under my belt. 
Got some of the prestige armor. I don't have the full set yet, but I think we're going to keep running it. Uh, especially like this next week, we're going to try to get some folks through it and try to master it a little better, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It's a fun raid. My only problem with Leviathan is that there's a couple encounters that have these weird ways that something can go wrong. That is (laughs) very tough (laughs) for a player to control like the circumstance like there's things that happen to chance mm-hmm. that can be very difficult to sway in your favor. And if that thing happens, it can pretty much like set a domino effect to wipe the encounter. Like things like, you know, getting launched by a scion oh in the void zone in, in Leviathan yeah. like, or um, in the callous encounter, or I don't know. There's a few different things. My, my only complaint with the raid design is like there should be less fail states that don't allow you to recover. Right. You know, like what what can make those encounters more fun and make the raids more fun in the future is if they're able like fail states are fine. Like you have to be able to succeed at different moving parts, right. but allow there to be a way to correct yeah. it. Yeah, like if you can react well enough, or if somebody can come in and like supplant your job or if you fail and you get sent somewhere else, you know, like there's a lot of other ways that they could do that, that would make it less frustrating. (laughs) Well, as it stands right now, I remember specifically at Axis where you'd have Mm -hmm. like, man, say two of your cannon holders go down. Did you ever have, did you ever, did either of you guys ever have that happen in a raid? Oh yeah. Oh my God. And like one person Absolutely. then has to take on the responsibility of all three and they're juggling that. But it can be done. Yeah. But And you could do the same thing with like throwing like if the person in charge of throwing the charges. Yeah. It, like I had sen- instances where I I did all three sections, like I was literally like jumping back and forth <laughs> across the arena throwing all the charges and clutched it. Yeah. And that was fun and it was awesome because we were able to recover. Yeah. And like you, but you have that story like that goes all the way back to that original thing. You have that story being able to do that. You can't really do that now in the raids. And that's, you can't do that in Leviathan. There's no, there's no way to recover. Yeah. Like not with that. I will say like this, this one, this did happen on our, on our, um, our final win on the callous prestige. Um, somehow like, after we got the damage down on the last plate mm-hmm. and he was doing his wind up to get ready. So we had to, you know, do the final damage when he's standing there about to do his super or whatever the heck he wants to do. <laughs> Somehow like three of us died. It was like, bam, bam, bam. All of a sudden <laughs> half of us were dead. And we're like, not only do we not, none of us can account for how we died. Yeah. Like seriously, but there was only three people left to do the damage, and they had, like, a third of it left. And they're like, oh, God. <sighs> but somehow, like, one of them popped hammers. Another one did. I don't even yeah. know what they did, but they did it. And they pulled it off with, like, two seconds left before the That's timer awesome. ran out. And it was so clutch. And that was great. But that's such a small window because now you have, like, this – this short window with the res yeah. tokens, like 30 seconds to pull somebody up or you're done. Yeah. And that's, you know, like the raid token thing is another um, controversial design choice in D2 that there's things I like about it. There's things I don't. One mm-hmm. of the things I don't is the fact that you can't leave somebody down and let the other five people try to make it yeah. work. Like you have 30 seconds to pull them up. And if you're out of tokens, it's full scramble, if you're out of reses, that's it. Yeah. Like you can't try to make it work. Yeah. You just, you just have to die. <laughs> like it's a, it's a fail state. And that's my only problem with the raids and destiny two is that there's too many fail states mm-hmm. and I don't get why they felt it necessary to install those. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I can see, I can see a reason why, because like you'd have a lot of people, like a lot of teams, mine included, when we'd go into raids 
there would there would definitely be like a point where you're like, okay, we should wipe. And usually that became apparent quit pretty quickly. Um, mm-hmm. I can see why they'd institute it, but also, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, it's it's hard. Like I see that like there's ways that it works and there's ways that it doesn't. It's not that it's hard, it's just like it's it adds a mechanic it in in a raid that is already so full of mechanics, it adds another mechanic that you have to worry about. My my personal opinion is like if they did nothing, the only change I would want would be for them to just remove the tokens from normal. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I felt that. like when doing normal, it felt like a hard or prestige level mechanic. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, we made it work and stuff, but we were like experienced raiders, but new raiders. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a tough layer to have to add where you just everywhere else in the game, you're accustomed to just being able to pull people yeah. up, you know? There's a there's a there's a phenomenon that I that I have coined called raid brain and it mm-hmm. is definitely after you've been in a raid for about 4 hours and it's like it's oh, not the hard mode thing, and you're like all right guys we've been we've been it's jello yeah <laughs> we need to we need to just do this i believe yeah, in us like we've gotten this far <laughs> <laughs> it's only because fatigue has set in. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you, you do get really mentally tired running those encounters yeah. and stuff. And then people start to get sloppy because they just are mentally tired. Right. So it's the whole thing, man. The, those are just some feedback things. But overall, like, it, it's still like, it's a fun encounter. Like, it's a lot of fun to do. Um, People have mentioned, you know, Leviathan... It's it's heavy on encounters, but light on bosses. Yeah, um, I think that that made it a really unique raid. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I think Joe Blackburn has mentioned that they they've heard that feedback and they they absolutely plan on there being more bosses in the future. Um, they said, you know, for the for the raid layer upcoming, there's there's one boss because that's what raid layers are going to be. Mm-hmm. I think. But for future like full fledged raids, I th- I think they they have in mind for it to be more Multiple bosses steps. and less just encounters. Yeah, yeah. which I'm down with. That but, but although the Argos fight stage one and stage two are is like that's in my top like three. Oh, it's super yeah. cool. And and see, but I'm fine with that because they're less encounters and they're more of. Those are more of the things you usually see in the in-between peaceful areas right. of a raid. Mm-hmm. Call it peaceful. Like the transition, like the jumping puzzle sections or, or et cetera. Yeah. Like they are encounters, but I don't really consider them encounters, yeah. you know, but they're fun. Like I don't want them to not make sections of the raids like that. I think that's part of what makes raids and destiny really unique and fun, mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely. One of my favorite moments ever in a raid is the jumping ship, the tomb ship puzzle in King's Fall. Like yeah. that's, it's iconic for me. You know, I, I would hate for those to go away. So yeah, man. Oh man. But that was, that was most of my reset. Um, I think now is the time of the show when we would normally do dirt fam discourse, but we don't have any this week. <laughs> Everybody's so hyped up. Man. Not we have a couple other right ones. Now. Yeah, we have a couple other ones. We're gonna t- we're gonna bank for when they're like topical, topical. So if you sent one and you haven't heard it read, like, we, don't worry, we have it. We're gonna we're we're just saving it for a rainy day, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we would love to hear what you guys are most excited about for Warmind. Uh, we'll probably push out a show. I have to ask Aaron Knight about this, but probably come out the day before Warmine. So you can yeah, get one last hype that. injection before it drops. Yeah. Uh, so send us an email or a speak pipe. Let us know what what piece of content has got you excited about Warmine. Uh, if there's something you're nervous or you're not sure about, like, I don't know how this rank thing is going to go. Let us know your feedback on it. Yeah. Um, we'd love to discuss that. And we like to hear from 
our community what what they think about this stuff. So emails are destiny reset podcast at gmail.com and speakpipe, speakpipe.com slash destiny reset. There you have it. We got uh, some new patrons this week. Uh, Guardians, we've sent you messages on Patreon's website to get your official exact gamer tag. So yes. be sure and visit Patreon's website again and check your messages. We're not going to use your uh, God given name on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we don't think what could ever go we wrong. John that you do Wilkes not from want Illinois. us to do that. <laughs> All right. John Wilkes Booth from Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, no. Located at 437 Washington Street. Is that my neighbor again? <laughs> yeah, right. He's <laughs> always going to the theater. Uh, but thank you to our new patrons and our existing yes, patrons that continue to fight that fight for us. Uh, if you don't know what a patron is, go to patreon.com slash destiny reset. Where for as little as one dollar a month, you can support the production budget of this show. Those funds go towards things like new equipment, software, hosting fees. Dan can tell you it takes money to put out a free podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does. So we're so thankful we have supporters. Uh, speaking of supporters, if you also if you don't want to do the Patreon thing, you just want to like give us a buy us a cup of coffee or something. I mean, that's cool too. Yeah, man. You can do that. There's a PayPal link on our website. Go check that out. And uh, we have lots of people that choose to do that. And we appreciate them as well. Yes. Don't think uh, we mentioned this. Well, we mentioned it every episode, but uh, a couple episodes ago, we said, of course, we appreciate even the simple download and listening of the show. Of um, but we don't, you know, Patrons, don't think we forget. You guys are hit on your personal accounts once a month, and uh, we do not gloss over that. We really appreciate that mm-hmm. support, so for sure. So finally, if you become a uh, patron or a supporter, you get a couple unique rewards. You get your gamer tag posted on our website, get a shout out on the show, and you get an invitation to a Discord channel just for patrons and supporters, where you get to ask Lance about his weekly or daily firehouse <laughs> sub habits. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! So come join us and get exclusive pictures of his turkey bacon ranch every day. Yes. Uh, and other things and you as can, well. You can address me in the patron channel as my actual first name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is changed legally to Turkey Bacon Ranch, by the way. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Dan, it's thanks late. for joining us this week, hey, man. Dude, yeah, I, dude. Thanks so much. Guys, thank you so much for having me. I had a blast. Uh, it's been a while since I've just talked Destiny on a podcast. Right. Um, well, you're that in is the right a place. Yeah, it is. It's still a thing. <laughs> <laughs> still a thing we're keeping it alive yeah. so uh yeah tell us uh how people can find you because they definitely need to ah uh, okay so uh i'll do the rundown for the ending of my podcast uh you can find side quest sunday at side quest sunday on twitter and instagram you can also contact contact at side quest sunday.com you can find me dan finity on twitter and instagram under dan finitwitch at dan finitwitch and you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Danfinity. There you go. Beautiful. There you go. Sounds like you've done I've that I've done before. it every week <laughs> for the past nine <laughs> weeks. <laughs> <That's been laughs> awesome. You get good at those Heck things. yeah, man. Aaron Knight, what about you, buddy? Where can people find you? You can find me on the Twitters at the Arrow Knights and Twi- uh, excuse me, it's late. <laughs> YouTube and Twitch. It's Arrow Knight with a zero. I feel like I haven't said that in a while. It's a zero, guys, instead of an O. So I have been posting some stuff pretty regularly on my YouTube channel. So please check that yeah, out if you have out. time. I was watching your Warmind video today because I finally got a minute. I was like, oh, I gotta go watch this gameplay. Yes. Uh, it looks really fun, man. I can't wait. Dude, it's wait, chaotic. Dude. Yeah, it's fun. I can't wait. Smudge uh. Excite. You can find me at Cyborg Sasquatch on Twitter and Mixer. Come give me a follow. Uh, I'll be streaming all week and include May 8th on your calendar. I'll be streaming the release of Warmind on Mixer. Ooh. You can come join me if you're interested. 
Finally, you can find us at Sp- uh, who almost did the wrong podcast there. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, I just throw it in there? If you want to hear about things non Destiny, you can uh, come check us out. Splash Damage Radio. We release every Wednesday with my buddies on the Blue Ranger and ShadowCon. That's at Splash Damage Rad on Twitter. If you're interested, sure you guys are talking about Infinity War soon, huh? Or have we already? are next this this. Uh, let me think. Not this week, but next. We're going to talk about Infinity War. We're going to give everybody a little bit of a buffer. This past week, we talked about our favorite childhood cartoons. Ooh, Arrow, yeah, I think I you'll that. like this one. Yeah. We talk about all kinds of stuff. Uh, so that's yeah, the kind of like content that. you can expect there, as well as uh, more of a PG-13 slash soft R ex- exposure. So just <laughs> careful <laughs> there. Uh <laughs> Okay, so that being said, you can find us at Destiny Reset on Twitter. That's the correct Twitter account. Uh, and on the web at www.destinyresetpodcast.com. That's your source for all things DRP, including links to subscribe on your favorite podcast app of choice. Arrow, do we have any new iTunes reviews this week? We do not. No, we didn't. Uh, we got one last week, but uh, none this week. So all those things, thank you. thanking you for your support. Yes. I withdraw them until I have <laughs> no, more iTunes reviews. No, no, no. Thank the right you, way to do everyone. That? I'm just 155 kidding. Guardians on the U.S. store and many others in other countries. Thank you guys so much. That's what Cyborg means to say right, right now. I'm just joking. <laughs> Thanks for the iTunes reviews, guys. Uh, if you're listening on the Apple Podcast app, uh, or iTunes, please go get drop us a review. It helps us get seen by more listeners looking to hear about Destiny and Lance's Turkey Bacon Ranch. Dude, I'm telling you. Hey, from now on, from now on, when you uh, talk about Firehouse, it's it's gonna be a thing that you have it's, to use my actual given first name. I'm plugging like Aaron very Aaron. subliminally our new sponsor, Firehouse. <laughs> <laughs> that out. Oh man. This is this it's uh it's late, boys. Dan, thank you again, dude. This has Absolutely. been a blast. Absolutely. Uh, thank you guys once again. Yeah. Welcome anytime, yes. of course. Uh if you couldn't tell by the name of the show, uh other than our random tangents, and I'm sure our listeners can uh, tell you about, uh we talk all about destiny, dude. So if that's what you're looking for, welcome Heck anytime. Yeah, man. Sounds good. I'll uh I'll hit you guys up. Anytime. That sounds good. Uh all right, guys. Until next week. Have fun playing Destiny 2, and take care, Guardians.